to interact with you on uh, AI and medical imaging technology. So we are from a different background. You are from a different background. So we'll have to find a midway to understand this process. And uh, that's the reason we want to understand your background. So a little bit of introduction help us. So let me start from myself. I am Dr. Deva, Deva Sinadipati. I'm a radiologist, professor at the Institute of Medical Sciences, Ames, New Delhi. Uh, my interests are mainly in, I'm a diagnostic radiologist with a bit of interventional interest. But I also have some interest in AI technology or the technology part of radiology. Let's put it that way. So that's what I am interested in. And that's what we are trying to focus on in this particular topic. I'll hand over the mic to uh, Dr. Joseph. And after that, one of, I mean, each one of you can introduce yourself so that we'll understand. Okay, thank you. Okay. Hi, good morning. I'm Dr. Levi Joseph. I am also a radiologist, basically. I trained my basic medical training was from Madurai, Tamil Nadu. Then I joined AIMS. Now I am a professor in neuroradiology. Means uh, a division of radiology plus uh, focused on neuro nervous system. Oh. And I do some intervention also for the diseases. And uh, my interest is also like little bit data science. And I am also one of your fellow students. Okay, <laughs> but but I am finding it very difficult. That's all. So, thing is, the purpose is not a very lecture type of thing. This is a discussion, and we have to start a dialogue somewhere. Deva said we are from different domains, but we require each other. We have lots of data, heaps of data. Don't know what to do, and we we want the engineers, but the engineers who come to as don't have an idea of biological system. Biological system doesn't obey your differential equations always. <laughs> so there is a need for a dialogue. So that, that starting point is this uh, such a programs. That's why we interacted with our, with our uh, course faculty, it was Andrew and uh, things. So we that that time we conceived this idea. So as uh, Professor Deva said, it is a good idea to have a background idea of. You are, I think, I guess you are from varied background. So, we will have an introduction. So, you yes. tell about yourself still. The, from. Uh, yeah, I don't want Good morning, sir. Uh, myself, Prabhu, I am from Bangalore. Uh, I just graduated with BSc in Physics. Uh, currently, I am doing diploma in this course. Uh, this is actually new to me, the medical imaging. I thought it was interesting. So, I wanted to explore and explore. If any of you have done already some work with images, medical images, you can mention that. Okay, that will help us how you understand it. Okay, okay good morning. Uh, my name is Kashif. I currently work as a data scientist in Bangalore and I am in the BSc level of this program. Uh, hi, um, I am Rishabh Jain. I have graduated with a BCom in finance. Uh, I also thought this was interesting. I am also in, currently in my last term of diploma. Hi, I'm Indra. I have completed my B.Tech in Electrical Engineering and I'm currently in Diploma last year. Hi everyone, my name is Kostov Goswami. I'm currently doing Masters in Computer Science and I've already completed one term in a degree level and also quite interested in medical imaging and with AI. Thank you. Good morning, sir. I am Neera Shetkar. I am currently pursuing B.Tech from Tehna Engineering College in Computer Engineering. And uh, here I am pursuing B.Sc level and this is my last term for B.Sc. Good morning, sir. My name is Sampurna Varshini. I am from Trivandrum, currently pursuing B.Tech in Computer Science, uh, doing diploma here. Hello, everyone. My name is Rajesh Verman. I'm currently a BTEC uh, second year student, CAC. Uh, this topic seems very interesting. That's why I want to explore this. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am Devargo Saha. I'm currently pursuing my BTEC degree. Uh, and I'm currently in the diploma level of this program. Uh, this, uh, this uh, seminar means very interesting to me. So I am pursuing. 
good morning everyone i am ritu varun sen and i am in the diploma level right now i have done my masters in physics and one of the very few reasons that i chose data science as a career was to know about more about medical imaging and these things so i think that currently in india there are there is very scarcity of good doctors so if we can implement medical imaging and ai in these things maybe we can reach the poor and help thank you hello sir i am coast of das i have done my masters in mathematics uh, so i choose data science over phd uh, because uh, i am fascinated in applied mathematics that's why i am here hello sir i am deepak kumar uh, i am economic graduate and uh, i am in the last terms of diploma i i am doing both programming and data science simultaneously and now i am interested in data science thank you good afternoon sir i said good morning <laughs> sorry um you my name working. is anu somar you are working at a different level continent <laughs> <laughs> no sir uh kanki i am pursuing btech uh, this is my last year in btech i am uh, i am currently a diploma member of this program Uh, good morning uh, my name is anjane shastri i work for uh, standard chartered bank um, some 3 4 years back uh, I, i work for legal and regulatory mandates uh, management like bank operates from multiple markets and we need to get their uh, mandates like uh, rbi releases some circular npc releases some circular and we were doing manual activities like comparing what requirements uh, uh, each uh, regulator asks and what control set we have so that intrigued me that why not we uh, automate this process so that's the reason i got into this data science and then uh, pursuing uh, the diploma in data science and coming back to this session it uh, you know way back uh, ibm has introduced dr watson, watson. which is uh, really enigmatic and uh, which is uh, which is really powerful which i we under uh, i think it's, it it's an oncology be, at least it used to, i mean it was potentially yeah. a big thing Yeah. yeah medical ai medical ai so i think it never it, took it's, off as it uh, yeah yeah it's now decommissioned i believe so that's one thing which really always uh, keeps uh, ringing in my mind so i thought definitely this will open up uh, more yeah. uh, information thank you so much you i really appreciate you guys coming from all the way from uh, delhi thank you thank you so much hi so my name is abiral kanthura and along with this ps uh, degree i am also pursuing my bachelor's in computer science in, i am currently in my second year from new delhi new uh, inter, sorry my college is national forensic science university in new delhi so along with that so like i wanted to dive deep into machine learning because i really like it uh, along with cyber security so like 3 weeks ago i started a project so i just, i wanted to see like what is a what can i do like in practically like a practical application for machine learning so what i did i started searching about skill lesions but i don't know much about like biology and stuff but i thought like maybe i can detect like cancerous skin lesions uh, and the non cancerous one like uh, malignant and uh, benign so i uh, so I, on craggle i like use the i is ic data set and then i like applied some uh, image net pre trained image net and and then i uh, improved my model so i was getting like accuracy of like 97 sometimes but it's still not that accurate because you know like because like false positive rate and it should be like 99 more than so yeah i'm still like trying to improve the model and something yeah so i'm exposure into medical images although it's a dermatology yeah problem. yeah 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 it's all the same okay <laughs> Okay. Hello. Good morning, sir. My name is Abhinesh. I am doing BCom from Saint Xavier's College, Kolkata. Along with, the, I'm in Foundation Eleven in this course. So I just wanted to dive into machine learning. I, I'm very interested in mathematics. So I chose this program and computing. Thank you, sir. Great. Good morning, sir. I'm Karthik, and uh, I'm a biomedical undergrad at BMS College of Engineering, Bangalore. and i'm currently parallelly pursuing this bs degree program and i feel that it's very important to uh, implement the ethical it very it's very important to solve the ethical uh, problem in uh, ai that's how we should regulate it hello good morning i'm ayushi i'm from delhi also near aims only 
So I'm working as a web app developer um, in a startup, and we are working on an application called Heel Trail, which is uh, we're trying to solve problems like these uh, using technology and healthcare infrastructure. So I'm here to gain more understanding about the do this domain and get some ideas for the. What is that Heel Trail? Heel Trail. Is oh. it's on uh, Play Store. Okay. And okay. What are you working on? What kind of problems? So currently, we are integrating all kinds of healthcare services, uh, infrastructures like blood banks, ambulances, pharmacies, um, elder care. Currently, we have uh, onboarding some uh, healthcare partners. Then we level it up uh, and integrate some AI technologies to uh, uh, like uh, locate pharmacies that are uh, you can easily find uh, med medicines nearby and. Um, healthcare services logistics health basically logistics right. also and then we'll move into the domain also okay so that's all oh, good morning sir uh, i am from ahmedabad and uh, uh, basically i am from commerce background but uh, the i am very much interested in data science uh, mathematics and the statistics and uh, i am very new to medical imaging but after advent of covid i feel that it is sector is very Interesting and very uh, uh, essential for humanity. So I, uh, to the uh, session. Thank. Good morning, sir. I am Shubham from Vivani Haryana. I am currently pursuing this course in in diploma level of BS course, and I have no experience in medical medical image processing, uh, but I am really interested in AI. So I took this workshop. Okay. Good morning, sir. Mm. I am Priyanshu Kumar and I am in foundation level of this course and I am currently waiting for my NEET UG result and I was actually fascinated by this workshop so I am here. Any of those who have not introduced have any uh, exposure to medical imaging? Uh, have you worked on medical imaging? Oh, okay. okay. So I think barring this guy, none of you have worked in uh, core mm. medical images, right? I think he is the only one who has used at least dermatology images too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Uh, so that's so the, the reason for in, this interaction is to understand how far you have used medical images because although those are photographs very similar to you know uh, image processing which is used in Facebook or Google or anything but unless you know how these images are generated and what it represents actual it whether it represents a particular organ or particular how is it uh, how is it seen and interpreted by radiologists? Unless you know that, it's very difficult to find a way to solve problems. So that's the reason we wanted to understand how many of you are, of you are actually used medical images. Dermatology images are easy to understand. We know that the skin, skin lesions or skin diseases are there in the skin. But radiology images are still, um, you know, mystery to many of non-trained or untrained eyes. That's difficult to understand what it represents even if you look at a scan it's difficult to say what it what is this and what it represents and how is it what is how is it interpreted all those things so that's what we want to solve and introduce to something you cannot teach radiology or anything in over a period of two hours but at least we'll, we'll introduce this concept of what is x-ray what is ct what is mr what is intervention what is fluoroscopy and how those images look at uh, look like and and how do we approach those images and some potential things to explore in those. So, uh, so the Deva has given the right introduction. As uh, thing is, medical images are photographs, but not just photographs. If you don't understand that, just as a, for a simple camera, you know the source of the imaging is the light, and it is focused on a particular receptor. This much we uh, understand. But the same understanding we have to extend to each of the imaging modalities which is increasing day by day in complexity and technology. So this will be the broad outline, uh, introduction and physical basis. This will be a one session. After that, we will have a small break. Then we will uh, show how we as a radiologist, we are viewing the images coming to the diagnosis and what we expect as a data scientist from you in a practical point of view as well as a research point of view and and we will share some of the work that has already been done okay so why we have to take uh, medical imaging what is the role of the medical imaging in the 
entire health career that is the first basic question why we have to image because we have to see inside the body without opening it like so simple light cannot penetrate the body so we have different modalities so this like what we want to look into the body so by looking into the body what we are want to see we want to see the structure what we call as anatomy inside the body how it is altered in disease status not only that how it functions it is very very difficult uh, to achieve this accurately understand the structure as well as the function but we are making an attempt through imaging which is giving more and more opportunities okay so this structure can be either normal or abnormal if it is normal we just tell the individual or patient okay nothing is there inside everything is okay or still if he has problem which we call clinical problem then we lead to different investigations maybe imaging may not solve your problems you have to go to some blood test or something if it is abnormal we have to direct further investigations or some in many of the cases we can straight away start the uh, treatment so uh, to start with the, i think like a digital camera and a film camera i think none of you might have seen the classical film uh, camera previous one analog camera like this our imaging has also almost totally switched to digital work which means each image is divided into many pixels each pixel is a calculated or it has a numerical value uh, that much you understand so each division is called a pixel as you reduce the size of the pixel the resolution of your image will increase and each pixel has a grayscale intensity maybe 256 bit information which can vary in the color from white at one end to black and other end so this image this which is called a digital image gives you a lot of uh, opportunity to manipulate it you can do roi the region of interest you can put measure the intensity measure the size and you can do lot of post processing and you can extract lot of features which is visible <laughs> which may, can be more visible to your computer vision that is one purpose where the data science starts M visually we how we see we will later explain we see the grass picture pattern but there are lot of underlying features which which are waiting to be extracted okay this digital uh, format gives this advantage and a scope for deep learning as well okay so what is the need for uh, ai why can't we are in India, there are no deficiency for doctors, you know, and uh, radiologists also. In especially Tamil Nadu, it is uh, industry producing doctors and professional radiologists also. They can take care. Why bring AI and why bring uh, bring a competition to ourselves? So, what is the role? So, there is an explosion of data that you have to understand. Obviously, one photograph. Now there are thousands of image for each patient if he comes to the emergency department within next five minutes his data will be into some mbs or gbs okay this is humanly impossible to analyze all the data that is a fact and and there are too many scanners also believe me there is a data in chennai alone the number of ct scanners or mri scanners they far exceed any european union country uk like this it is proportionate to our population right but this much is being generated so most of it is we are seeing only 10 percent of the images we are able to analyze only 10 percent of the images other images have data they may not be useful or no time to see them also so this is a fact and and there is heavy reliance on imaging as a patient or as a normal people if you go to the hospital if you come out without a scan you will yourself ask doctor has not done any scan how can he diagnose like this? So, it is a total lens from the public perspective as well as the doctor's perspective also. Everybody is going jumping to the image. So, there is a need for uh, intelligent looking into, into the data. And as I said, there are numerous images and imaging parameters also. As we take you along with different images, CT scan, MRI, and the number of variables are very, very high. They are multiplying. So, to look into it, there is a genuine need for. Uh, machine learning 
and as a radiologist as I said we see only the woods there is grass pattern but looking into the each of the tree may give more valuable information to understand the disease itself and we are now the medicine is going to a individual medicine each patient as is unique is not like anything so there is a unique solution for everybody for that it is will not be possible without uh, data mining okay these are all known to is common benefits of ai for a machine okay now we will go to the proper modalities uh, each i ask deva to take over all right uh, without introduction let's switch our gears uh, now we'll go into the proper radiology part of it so before going to the af uh, imaging and uh, the images how do you use those images and all you should understand what are the available modalities what are the available tests this is not a comprehensive list of all the modalities or tests there are much more than this but these are the commonly used modalities and uh, specifically here we'll talk about radiography fluoroscopy ultrasound computer tomography and mri not those nuclear medicine modalities but because that involves different set of experts we are not we don't do this kind of modalities but they are very similar to these kind of modalities so if you understand this uh, top 5 or 6 uh, modalities uh, you will be able to understand those modalities very well right so let us start with uh, the history of how x-ray was uh, discovered you all know x-ray was discovered in uh, 1985 accidentally by ranjan he didn't know what those x-rays were so he named it x-rays um and this was the first uh, radiograph of can anyone guess what is this radiograph yeah. yes good yeah. good very good this was bertha's hand <laughs> this ranjan's wife who used to peep into his lab for giving coffee or something so he asked her to hold the plate he noted some fluorescence he asked her to hold the plate she was holding this like that image got registered with that ring the erwedig ring yeah so this is the uh, hand of uh, ranjan's wife and uh, he was clearly clever enough to avoid radiation for himself so and uh, this is the first x-ray which was discovered in 1895 and one year later this was put into medical use see such the such was the need of x ray and such was the uh, association, association of medical image medical need and the uh, physical discovery so one year later this is an x ray which shows uh, just a second okay so this is you know this is a frog and this is a radiograph of the frog and in any radiograph we can see all the bones uh, nicely this is how Uh, that's how x-ray is very important to us fractures are much better seen on x-rays and here we can see that in the location of right uh, leg or somewhere there is a bulge here this is a callus formation which is a reparative uh, thing which happened which the fracture heals with callus formation so there is some callus formation with which we know that this is a fracture which has happened a little while back maybe 10 days or 15 days back to this frog so the point the purpose of this slide is to show that <clears throat> immediately after the discovery it was put into use in uh, medical uh, diagnostics so such is the association of uh, radiology one second uh, do you know uh, uh, one more significance of this discovery physics yeah yes very good mm -hmm. this was awarded the first ever nobel prize this discovery okay so how images are acquired If you look at this, this is a patient who is put into a, a scanner, and uh, you know this is the patient, and this is any imaging system, irrespective of whether it is ultrasound or uh, CT or MR. Let us consider this as an imaging system, and patient comes into the imaging system. This is a technologist or a operator who operates the scanner. He will adjust multiple parameters uh, to optimize the system. Like any photographer will expo when change the exposure, focus, and all those things. Similarly, the patient will be put in the scanner, and uh, the op uh, the technician will choose the appropriate parameters. Once that is done, the images will be transferred to. Uh, it comes out of the imaging system. That particular image will have all the 
undesired things also not just the image it will have artifacts it will have blur there will be issues in contrast there will be issues in there will be a lot of noise ranging from electronic noise and all those noises and so there will be some degree of distortion also so you'll have the true image embedded and mixed with these kind of distortion and noises and the purpose of a radiologist the role of radiologist to separate out mentally between the images and those noises and in your mind you separate it out you find a pattern and come to a diagnosis that's how a radiologist mind would work and that's the reason why we always thought it is very difficult to replace in a physician or a radiologist brain that's what we used to think how can a machine or an algorithm can do this this is so random this is so difficult even for a radiologist it is so too difficult to differentiate few things how can a machine do this job but increase increasingly we have proven we have been repeatedly proven wrong so that's how that's how we are in this era of ai so to start with x rays as you all know this is the x ray machine uh and this is the uh, floor mounted system and this is the tube x ray tube for any x ray uh, capture you need a source which will generate x ray and you need a device to capture x ray so this is the receptor or the uh, sensor which will capture the x rays and will register into uh, it will convert that into electric signals adc digitized and then it will be given a uh, gray scale to it that's that's how uh, the process is that process happens so this is the x ray detector or the sensor whatever you might you want to call it this is we call it as detectors in our terminology but sensor is also okay so this is a source of x ray so what happens in uh, you it's very similar to uh, a camera um, what happens in camera light source is the human uh, the person himself light source is all all of us we are emitting uh, visible light that's an electromagnetic radiation we are emitting light which is captured by a camera sensor which is sensitive to the visible light what we are trying to do here is we are using an a different form of electromagnetic radiation which is x ray which is much more energetic and powerful compared to visible light it crosses our body so we are no more interested in the surface details we are going into the body the photons enter and exit the body we collect the data through and through the, it crosses the body and uh, the data is, data is collected from the uh, when it crosses the body so once something crosses the body and 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 this photon gets uh, refracted absorbed attenuated all kinds of interactions happen within the body anything which crosses the body we we'll have to undergo all these interactions so after those interactions it will come out of the body and that is where you capture the x ray uh, photons once you capture that that will give an idea what is within the body what what is happening within the body and that is how that is how we image uh, that's how that's a basis of uh, you know physical basis of radiographs that's how uh, they are created and uh, the other thing is based on what what kind of path it takes whether it crosses a bone whether it crosses a lung whether it crosses a soft tissue like muscle or something they get attenuated accordingly and a similar picture will be formed on a radiograph so it is very similar to a photograph just that photographs give you the surface details whereas radiographs will give you a through and through details so it is it is it is as simple as that so they were you are showing an x ray yeah. so what is the white region here what what you will say about the yeah so so okay, anyone let, can let guess us, what is yeah. white there yeah, yeah bones in terms of physics the x ray what happened to the x ray in these regions yes 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 so that good, is good. attenuation attenuation what we call attenuation so x ray was not allowed to pass it was blocked by the bones so that that appear white so it is a digital image you can reverse the color also you can yes. exactly make it black and the make make the, the the both sides they were you can explain what is black here yeah so this is this is a digital image so in like any other digital image you can invert the color also invert the gray scale also you can manipulate with all you can make it color also it doesn't matter each this is formed by multiple pixels 
because even the detector has multiple pixel elements those are sensors small tiny sensors they capture those uh, uh, you know x-ray photons and they convert that into electrical energy very similar to what happens in camera so each of this each of these pixel will have some value and it can be manipulated that's what we call as image processing in our uh, domain all these things can be processed in a way that it is better interpreted or make it more sharp more make it more uh, in different uh, uh, pattern so that our eyes can visualize those things because the potential of those pixels are in multiple you know bit depth can be very high like 16 or 14 or anything but our eye cannot process so much so we need to change that uh, color of the image so that we can appreciate those uh, this thing so all this processing can be done so let's uh, see this particular chest x-ray this is a chest x-ray this is a chest x-ray x-ray was done for the chest and the central part any guesses what is the central part the white area heart heart is a little more harder tissue compared to lungs that's that's the reason why lungs are more darker which means that that part of our body allowed more photons to pass through without any interaction without any absorption whereas the whiter areas including the bones would have blocked most of the photons so that they cannot pass through the body so that's how an image is formed so what it represents is a 2d this is an area of uh, image right this is not a 3d what but we are we have passed the x-ray through a 3d structure but we are making it as a 2d structure 2d area image so what is happening here is we have converted a 3d structure into a 2d photograph so what is the problem in this one good thing is that we can see through it we can look through what is inside and what is all happening that's a benefit that's the reason why x-ray is being used uh, or radiographs are being used but what is the downside of it when you when you compress a 2d structure into sorry 3d structure into a 2d structure you lost this positional details for example if something is located here if there is a swelling here that would look very similar to someone having a swelling at the back so you lose those positional details that's one of the limitation of x-rays but generally you get the idea how x-rays uh, function how we capture it how, how we interpret it how do we interpret we know the basics we know the anatomy we know where the rib, rib is located what it how it should look like how heart should look like and once you know the basics what is expected when you look at those x-rays if there is a break if there is something abnormal if it is shifted there is no uh, darkness in one side then we know that that is abnormal we know those patterns once you know the pattern we know that that is a disease process we we match in our mind we match those patterns with something there is a dictionary here so you match those patterns with the dictionary here and we come to a diagnosis that is how a radiologist would report or interpret any x-ray that is how it is being done so hope you understand uh, this if you have any questions please don't hesitate you can ask any questions because we and we also know that this is a different domain new to you uh, you may not uh, fully understand it so if you have any questions please ask us all right if you are okay with this let us move on to the next modality so can i ask uh, some questions uh, yeah that's so, better okay on behalf of you i am asking so go back to the so there are what are the variables which may affect the this image starting from the source yeah so like i told you in any photograph or anything there are parameters most of the time just click the button that's all right but in the behind this uh, whatever is there there is a lot of parameters aperture uh, exposure shutter speed iso speed uh, shutter speed this is all there focal length you choose multiple things but you know most of them is done by a preset which is which does it for you similarly on a given console x-ray console we have to do all those things now this is mostly taken care of by ai or preset rules or other automated mechanisms but if you want to do it you have to choose few parameters one is kilo voltage the other is milliampere 
that is nothing but how much energy of how much uh, quantum or a magnitude is being passed through the body so these two parameters decide the amount of x rays that will pass through the quality of x rays and the amount of x rays so they were will it be same for a thin person and very obese person absolutely not in. that is where the role of radiographer the operator's role comes in he cannot use a standard a thing to everyone you have to tailor made it's all tailor made you know you look at a patient you look at a body size okay this would okay this is fine so he might need 120 kv of uh, x ray uh, energy and mas can be 2 or 3 mas so he has to choose that now everything is automated that's 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 a different uh, thing but if when you have to do it and uh, manually you will have to choose guess the uh, body weight thickness how obese he is how thin he is then you decide even even for doing a particular body part also for x ray chest there is a lot of lucency hair yeah because of lung there is not much is uh, blocking the x rays so you get good quality x rays but if you use the same radiation dose or the same kind of x ray to a pelvis it will not happen because pelvis is full of bones and soft tissues so you will not get a good quality x ray so accordingly you you know it plays on your mind okay so this is what we have to do this is what we have to change and get a good quality x ray now what is the role of technology here the role of technology is to automate it how to automate either you do a rule based method that this is a weight this has to be the parameter this has to be the parameter or you may you enable it with ai just use a camera you look at the patient it will decide the radiographer is don't have to he didn't, he may not do anything right you may not uh, he can just press the button he may not be fully trained also in a periphery setup you there is you may not find a trained radiographer to perform an x ray and x rays are all radiation modalities there is a lot of harmful effects to not only question of training yes. it is not accurately possible to accurately take a radiographer will approximately set a parameter it may come good or not depending on your photograph sometimes you change the aperture but x ray you cannot take repeatedly so you have to adjust one thing so as you said most of the systems they pass a test ray they judge the thickness then automatically calibrate the values almost all the systems yes. okay so the intelligent yes. systems yes. are in place okay so let us sum up and go ahead so x ray is the source of this image x ray is as you know it is in the lower end of the wavelength in the electromagnetic spectrum it has a property to pass through the objects you exploit that property to form an image if you go to deeper into the physics how it interacts with the each atom it it is uh, there are three major types of interaction photoelectric effect you might have known compton effect how it scatters this all make it how it passes through the so particular object or patient or subject and it forms an image on the other side which is a as you said it is a digital detector or digital sensor which converts into the electrical signals which is converted to a gray scale image all right so let's let's keep those uh, text slides there is nothing in there so what is the next modality the next modality there is something called fluoroscopy fluoroscopy is what is fluoroscopy you must many of you might not have heard of this uh, uh, fluoroscopy at all but there is a modality which exists in radiology domain which is called fluoroscopy there is no it's very similar to radiograph it it, it is a radiation modality it, it uses x rays it generates x rays yeah it's a whole same. same it's same. a same it's a same it's by the convention you know x ray is typically the x ray which is uh, should be called as x ray but you know but the by the usage you know dalda is dalda right mm. similar to that so x ray is x ray film is also x ray x ray beam is also x ray equipment is also somebody says that it's x ray but the right word to be used is radiograph right word is radiograph so so what is fluoroscopy fluoroscopy is uh, very similar to x ray very similar equipment the principle is exactly the same it generates there is a x ray tube which generates x ray for us which passes through the patient and we are collecting those information from behind the patient this is the, the whole process is the same the only difference is that if you consider x ray as a snapshot modality like a photograph x ray is like a photograph 
it emits x-ray for a fraction of time you capture it that's all snapshot modality whereas fluoroscopy is a video kind of modality you generate x-ray keep it on for a certain period of time few seconds or few you know 20 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever may be the time period so if you consider x-ray as video uh, uh, photograph fluoroscopy is a video why there is a need for a video right if there is a photograph why do why do why there is a need for uh, a video there are certain situations where you need to study the movements which is not uh, uh, which won't be clear on uh, snapshot modalities photos will not show you uh, a great uh, information on uh, on what you are looking for so fluoroscopy is like a video x-ray video which will collect the same information over a period of time for example if you are injecting some contrast into the artery that's what is exactly going on in this particular photograph so this is the arm this is the arm left side arm and these are the fingers this is a finger and again this is a zoomed up image of the same these are the fingers and what this tortuous you know branching pattern is all vessels within the within the body in this area how do you visualize these vessels you inject something called contrast into the blood vessels this is you you know roughly this is all those called as angiogram or angio you know you must have heard of angio right cardiac angio or whatever angio so they actually inject contrast into those vessels to visualize those vessels it gives some contrast to those vessels and you can look at those vessels you can study the anatomy is there a blockage what is the shape what is the caliber and these are the things you can information you can get so to study this when you are injecting something obviously you are looking for something is moving over a period of time which is spreading over uh, into the body so you cannot capture it just based on something like a snapshot modality you need to capture it over a period of time even if it is in a pulsatile or something you need to capture it over a period of time so that is fluoroscopy and that is digital subtraction angiography i'll not going to go into the details of digital subtraction angiography because that's again a little bit of sophisticated technology but the principle is same if radiograph is a photograph uh, fluoroscopy or dsa is a video of uh, x ray this thing joseph you want to add anything yeah yeah so even if you are still sitting still nothing inside the body is still everything is moving if something is still then it means different thing okay so we want to see something function also heart blood that's why these modalities are uh, there uh, as he said that contrast is nothing but iodine containing iodine you so iodine will block x rays it is a uh, it is a physics behind it so it would separate out if you inject into a vessel it will be separately see that's all this it will be nicely visualized even if you know it's like putting a instagram filter you know you 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 can highlight a particular feature you can highlight a particular this okay. thing right so we use contrast we will show some uh, videos also so this is like inside the brain how yeah. your vessels look like so he has shown a image where one vessel has got a block this is uh, this is our angiogram uh, uh images so this is the, how a fluoroscopy will so the like. previous is his day to day work this is my yes. day to day work in seeing inside the head uh, this how the vessels go inside and if there is a block doing some plumping work or yeah. sealing work this is our job but for the first essential step is to see them the technology has enabled these things and believe me 1895 x-ray was detected within few years they injected inside the artery and image of the vessels that okay. was a need that the, that, that uh, was the amount of need was and the uh, power of scientific discovery uh, you you know the i think machine learning when did machine learning start <laughs> that's a <laughs> that's good one that's a answer. good one okay no when was the computers discovered okay turing uh, machine so when the concept of machine learning that machine can do work for you 50s itself okay so that is the beauty and power of uh, scientific discoveries the time and ai was i mean uh, coined much around the same time when it was discovered right when the computer was discovered in fact turing purported it to be an artificial intelligence only he named it i am not sure about that but it, the idea started that time only 
ओके एंड यस 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 आई रिमेम्बर दैट मूवी या सो लाइक दैट वी आर एट द प्राइम यूजर्स ऑफ द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ सच टेक्नोलॉजी पीपल डेवलप टेक्नोलॉजी एंड वी आर द वन यूजिंग इट एंड यू आर सीइंग इट दिस इज इनसाइड द ब्राइन दीज आर द वेसल्स सो द व्हाट इज डीएसए मींस रफली द फर्स्ट इमेज यू पॉइंट आउट दिस दिस इज विद बोन so with board uh, we feel some disturbance it is not that much clear so we take out the bone subtract the bone and see the next image the this is without bone without bone we see very clearly we see only the vessels so this right. is digital subtraction subtraction is subtracting the background or bone or soft tissues we just focused on the vessels where we inject contrast that is what we want to highlight and machine does it for you there is a it's not ai yeah, it's it's a age old method to do that so uh that's that's how hmm. any any questions yes yes absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. if you use it uh, without uh, you know if you use it uh over a prescribed time or dose they are definitely dangerous they are ionizing modalities they are heavily energized particles heavily means they are energized particles they pass through our body when they pass through they can hit our dna also when the dna is hit it will obviously uh, if there is a energy absorption there can be some uh, in a movement of molecules or the genes can get uh, disturbed when it is not properly repaired by the body that can lead to mutations that can lead to that can lead to cancers and all so that's the reason why x rays are dangerous they are not simple uh, modalities that's the reason there is a lot of regulations to use it only trained personnel can uh, handle it so that's the uh, uh, you know other part of it but what we are talking so, about is when you use it properly these are uh, the if, utilities if you see us going into this room the first room the where this cat lab is there uh, and we will go like warriors we put aprons lead aprons there we cover our head uh, we put a neck collar and uh, after that there will be barriers to block the x-rays lead lead barriers lead glasses we can see it also and we it will block also and we will have dosimeters here tagged here and we have live dosimeters also how much x-ray radiation is going on and cumulative dose also in a year if it in, there is a unit called millisievert if it exceeds a cumulative dose my dose exceeds this much uh, i will not be allowed to do procedures I, they will ask me to right okay regulatory bodies that is atomic energy regulatory board you might have aer yeah. is there that is also controlling us so we have to report to them okay in, for every individual uh, in the there is a terrestrial radiation will be there so the, this radiation particles are there in the earth also that will be equal to 5 millisievert that much everybody is exposed to we as a professional we are exposed up to 20 millisievert if it beyond goes beyond that we are not allowed to do and as he asked the answer for his question is they are highly energetic radiation which can interact with the within the cellular elements nuclear elements dna so there should be a limit and for the patient also we can't keep on taking x rays so next time you go don't ask the doctor to do me ct scan for me because this doctor knows how much radiation here. so the cost and benefit he will assess okay that's the reason you have to use it uh, judicially uh, not every time you should do a ct to you know that's important okay yeah yeah blockages yeah, yeah. leakages whatever in a pipe system you expect all the problems can occur in the body also all okay. plumbing problems can be expected uh, and uh, yeah. can be diagnosed on this yeah. because there are tubes and we are injecting something into the tube vessels or tubes right the mm. vessels or you know vessels vessels arteries and yeah, tubes all right, right. arteries and veins uh, and coming to the radiation problem we are employing this a logistical problem how to give minimum radiation get maximum output for this also we are using the computing power and uh, data science so we will highlight those potential roles where data so along the way i am just Uh, highlighting some of the areas but comprehensively we will tell later also okay okay so let's move on to a third modality which is yeah. ct scan yeah tell me ct scan is 
सॉरी एंजियो मीन्स वेसल इट्स नॉट हार्ट एंजियो मीन्स वेसल so angiogram is a picture which will show the vessel so if your fluoroscopy or dsa used to show the angiogram it is called as angiography can be coronary angiography heart is coronary angiography brain angiography so peripheral angiography so angio is the context specific uh, terminology all right so let's move on to ct scan ct scan is again a radiation modality much more radiation intensive incentive sorry intensive compared to radiographs but what is the difference x ray is also use the same technology here also there is a gantry there is x ray tube there is a detector here in the opposite side it passes through the patient so what is the big difference between uh, ct scan and uh, an x ray right so if you remember when i talked about x ray there was an issue since that is a compressed version of 3d into 2d structure we lose those localization capabilities we don't know where is it located which is important unless you know it is located in a particular compartment you it's very difficult to come to a diagnosis if it is lung i can say it is lung cancer i'm just an example if it is in bone i can say it is bone cancer if it is in skin i can say it is skin cancer if you don't know where is it located how, what can i comment on so localization is important so how to localize it that's the purpose of ct scan to to leverage the use of uh, radiographs sorry uh, the x rays and look deep into the structures so how it is done has very similar principle source is x ray tube there is a detector multiple pixels will be there which will get the information patient will be placed in between the only difference is that in radiograph both will be stationary whereas in a ct scan patient will move along the gantry within the gantry whereas the tube and the the detector or the sensor will rotate around the patient in a very circular manner or a spiral manner so this is a gantry this is a ct scan gantry this is a patient this is where the patient will be lying down and the gantry uh, this is gantry and this is a table right the table will move into that bore this is called the bore of the gantry the x ray tube is located here the detector is located here and that will go round and round during that process the table will also move into the gantry so when the tube and uh, uh, the detectors are moving round and round the patient is going through so it collects the data from 360 directions you know 360 direction data is collected the same kind you know passes through a data is collected and that is how a ct is done so when you when you when the tube and uh, detector goes round and round and and you uh, you know cover the entire head what it actually means is that the entire volume of data is captured by the detector it goes round and round the entire volume is captured okay so this is how a spiral would look like this is this is a path taken by the x rays around the human body when when a chest scan is done or abdominal scan is done and how a raw data will look like unprocessed raw data of of human brain when tube goes round and round to capture the entire volume would look like this we cannot interpret this this is a summated projectional image of 360 degree over a length of you know 10 cm or 15 cm it would look like this even we cannot interpret this now there is a need for an algorithm which will mathematical algorithm which will convert this raw data into sections or slices now you need to understand what are slices slices are nothing but cross sections till now we are looking at planar images photographs you know you can you know chest was like this you know it's the anatomical position of the chest it look like a chest if you see the if you see the radiograph you can recognize yeah this is lung this is heart so it looks like chest but what happens in ct is that the axis is being changed now we are cutting multiple sections we have covered the entire uh, volume here we collected the entire volume of data now slice those volume right slice this like this slice this and see it like this right slice this and see it like this in front of you that is the idea if you look at this particular image here then you would be able to uh, understand what i am saying
So this particular slice is at the level of here. You cut it across here, open it and see it like this. The image will look like this. So CT will give you the cross sectional image, not the frontal or, you know, uh, uh, lateral or, uh, you know, the frontal view. It'll it is not a planar image. It is yeah. a sectional image. This is key to understand. This is very important to understand. And it is very difficult to convey to a non-radiologist because, uh, you know, we know it, but it's very difficult to convey this. But it's very important for you to understand. If you do not understand this, you would not, you would not be able to process those images unless you know what it represents, what part of it is being displayed here. It won't be, it will be very difficult to utilize those images. So, there were the, here X-ray is also different, like, right? The source of the X-ray. Yes. yes, so, so different. the parameters will be obviously different and the collection and the data processing is also no, different. The geometry of X-ray coming yes. out. Yes, geometry is quite different. Depending on the slices of CT scanner and all those things, it will have a very fan-like projection. Um, X-rays will have a very uh, narrow divergent ray. So whereas you, it will have a can fan we beam. compare if a light shown just like that, that is in an X-ray radiograph, but if you convert into a slit, collimate yeah. it and pass like a ray which is called a fan me here you, you are showing it now so yeah this, this is this the part one. of the fan beam so if, if you pass like a fan beam thin beam and ask the x-ray to cut the body and give a slice can you understand so you are it cutting the body without part, letting yeah. the blood right like you can write using the x-ray to cut the body and see it like okay. like if there is a loaf of bread cut it into slices and you, if you look at the slice, exactly the same. The whole volume is cut into multiple slices and what you're looking at is the cut part of it. Like a tree cut in sections, look at it, there will be, you know, round round structures, right? That is what the cross-sectional, cross-sectional modality means that's the meaning of cross-sectional modality. CT is a cross-sectional modality, right? And uh, so what is the benefit of CT? Like I said, if this is, the front of head and this is the back of head. Now anything, this is the right side and this is the left side, this is uh, front and this is back. If anything located here, I know that it is located somewhere in the anterior part. If it is located posteriorly, we can say that this is located in the posterior part. So you get that localization information. So much better than uh, 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 X-ray. Apart from that, the contrast resolution because of the computational we have multiple projections x-ray is only one projection but ct scan has 360 projections so taking into account all those 360 data and using algebraic equations and uh, yeah this is how a machine decomposed machine would look like uh, this is a gantry and these are the detectors and these are slip links which will make the tube and uh, sensors go round and round across the patient body and this is how x-rays or uh, uh, slices are generated. Okay. So, now once you acquire the entire volume of data, now the job is to make slices because we don't understand, we cannot interpret the volume raw data. It has to be sectioned on our uh, uh, predetermined uh, locations, right? So, we need to, that process is called reconstruction. Once you have the entire data to create sections is called reconstruction, right? There are multiple methods of reconstruction. Earlier, there it was used to be uh, back projection uh, based methods. I'll not go into the details of it uh, just to, you know, make yourself aware of this uh, techno. I mean, uh, terminology is back projection. Then it changed from back projection to filtered back projection. Now there is something called iterative reconstruction. Why there is evolution of so much? The reason is the images, we want better resolution images at lower radiation cost. We want to give less cost, uh, radiation to the patient, but get better uh, image quality. We want to pay much, pay less and get better pizzas. So that's our uh, idea. So the iterative reconstruction is a new technology which has come up recently and this is where reconstruction is one area where it, it is a hot bed for deep learning also. Because if you want to reduce radiation, you need to assume few things. 
computer has to uh, fill in few data without uh, which is which is not being collected so in such way such way even without collecting the data if you want to collect data you have to spend more so we have this assumption and uh, uh, deep learning methods which can create an image for you not completely uh, uh, a new de novo image but with some amount of sparse data you collect it with this very less amount of radiation that will be very noisy but deep learning algorithms can clean it for you so the what is the benefit of it you get good quality images without giving much radiation to the patient which is a very big benefit of uh, uh, reconstruction if you are if it is done with deep learning algorithm so this is one area where uh, ai people are working heavily on this particular area reconstruction is one area so you understood right raw data is being collected by round and round and this thing and the reconstruction is nothing but the sections uh, we'll show those sections how we scroll and uh, to me the way it is like filling a sudoku problem filling with numbers the the cross section we said na the cross section is divided into again pixels typically 512 into 512 each of the pixel should be given a number depending on the tissue on it if it is air it will be zero or negative it will look black if it is bone it will be white like that 512 into 512 matrix has to be filled up for that i think as a uh, mathematical problem you need this that much number of equations that equation is given by the x ray passing through it and the attenuation electrical signal generated by it those equations are solved and this all the pixels are filled with numbers which numbers are converted into image that is the gross understanding like uh, solving a sudoku problem you have to fit a number but in sudoku only only one number is there unique solution but for a image there may not be, there may be a range of numbers and as he said we can use deep learning techniques to fill in some approximate numbers even without exactly giving the equation the expected numbers uh, this this like without seeing draw the remaining part i am giving one half of the puzzle remaining puzzle you solve it Absolutely. okay there where is the, the, the purpose is not to make you understand every step of it just there is a scope here just okay. you are introducing do this in reconstruction yeah. yeah. because there is a scope for ai here Uh, people are working on it that's the reason uh, we are introducing this okay. so this is a map of this you can consider this as an entire image matrix and you need to fill those values of pixels and you have multiple equations and there are 100 unknown values you have one or one equations that is how they are filled the equations are the what is the equation projection is from here the value is collected by the uh, receptor so this is how the equation is constructed and what is the benefit visually what will be the benefit if you apply iterative reconstruction or dl or ai based reconstructions this is a traditional method of reconstruction with a low radiation dose this will be the appearance of a particular image this is a region of pelvis this is the bone this is the soft tissue and these are bowel loops bowel loop you know intestines right these are intestines in the pelvis right what is the difference between the two these two scans can anyone highlight quality yes but noise is a better word yeah yes noise there is lot of noise noise disturbs the image noise you know dissuades us to you know it's very difficult to interpret something uh, when it is noisy right so we need to clean the noise cleaning the noise can be as simple as that spatial smoothing right there are multiple ways to do it denoising can be just spatial smoothing what is the problem with that spatial smoothing will decrease your spatial resolution right it image may look very pretty there won't be any noise but it look it look plastic and artificial and it will smoothen it so it loses the spatial resolution without without losing the spatial resolution maintaining the same fidelity you have to get a better image quality without any noise so this you can achieve with iterative reconstruction or iterative reconstruction if you combine it with dl and ai methods it can even be uh, uh, done better better than this so eventually what is the achievement we did we get good quality image without spending much spending in this thing is radiation radiation penalty you know half the radiation or 25% the radiation which you would normally use you get a proper good quality image which is a big uh, uh, boost for uh, ct scan 
ultrasound so i'll not stress much on ultrasound ultrasound is based on a totally different technology till now we talked about x ray technologies x ray fluoroscopy ct scan all these are x ray technologies radiation uh, technologies ultrasound beams are based on acoustics the sound ultrasounds as as the name uh, tells you this is ultrasound ultrasound is nothing but anything more than 20000 hertz are called ultrasound but our medical imaging devices would use something in the range of 1 to 20 or 25 megahertz of frequency so there is a probe which will generate this is a probe these are probes okay various shapes of probes which will generate that acoustic pulse once it generates the pulse it passes through the body it comes back because it's most of them are reflected refracted it comes back when it comes back it some of them will be attenuated very similar to x rays some of them will be altered and this attenuation alteration or absorption whatever is based on the type of tissue within that uh, body structure so that is picked up and that will be represented as an image that's how ultrasound images are formed so ultrasound is also known as a cross sectional image the reason is we are not looking at planar uh, you know you, you look at cut sections you keep the probe here it will show the cut section of this particular if you uh, keep the probe here it will show the cut section of this area so that's the reason uh, ultrasound is also known as a cross sectional modality so it will not have this localization problems you can exactly know where the particular disease or lesion or tumor is located in the body so it's a called as a lady it's not it's it's a cross sectional modality but the what is the benefit of ultrasound this is not a radiation intensive modality it is based on purely sound there is it is harmless you can do multiple number of times doesn't matter and it is a real time modality you can keep doing and watching the movement constantly without any issue you can capture the entire 3 uh, minutes 4 minutes doesn't matter because there is no radiation involved there is no harmful effects so ultrasound has lot of benefits some there are some issues also i'll not highlight those all right coming to the last modality mri mri is again a very different modality it's not based on x rays it's not based on sound it is based on magnetism so just can to somebody expand what is mri very good very good okay why is it called magnetic resonance imaging okay. what is resonant here the original name of just a fun fact uh, original name of mri was nmr nuclear magnetic resonance you know why it was removed the word nuclear was removed yes 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 after hiroshima everybody was afraid of this nuclear just to part. make it more palatable uh, to promote its adoption they had to remove the name nuclear because the resonance of this happens in the nuclear level so the actual terminology is it is NMR. more explanatory but unfortunately it was removed yeah. in our body there be uh, 65% makeup of water yeah and more than that the body fluids from the uh, they show the dipole moment when uh, the magnetic uh, fields are passing Yes, yes, exactly. So, great. So, so good initial yes. point. This is this is a starting point. Uh-huh. This is a starting point. But let me little bit go back and explain to the others also. So, body is full of water. Even the soft tissues are made of mostly organic compounds. Organic compounds will have hydrogen. Hydrogen is also called as proton. So we use this term protons in MRI parlance very much because water has proton it's all full of protons our body is full of protons whether it is water or organic compound blood or anything even fat has uh, protons so it's all full of protons and the the molecule which we target in mr is proton the hydrogen molecule when you put a patient or when you get into the magnet under this 3 tesla or 4 or, or 1.5 tesla magnet that amount of magnetism will force these uh, you know Uh, rotating uh, proton molecules or hydrogen molecules to align to the field align to the uh, so can we B0. imagine each of the hydrogen molecule as a small bar magnet yes. it, it's, huh. it's it's yeah it's it's almost like a miniature magnet they have to align to the uh, uh, the bigger magnet so to Big give an idea of uh, how much field you are subjected to uh, do you know what is the earth's magnetic field in gauss it is measured in gauss na no? 5 gauss right like that 
but inside this magnet, uh, so it is Tesla. Tesla is 10,000 cars. These are typically 1.5 Tesla, means 15,000 cars. So, huge right. amount of magnetization. So, once you go inside this scanner, all the magnets inside your body, that is bar magnets. Bar Mag magnets bar align. Align. Either align with the field or against the field. Yes. And reach an equilibrium. Okay. Okay. So, so that is the reason when you, why we have to move from 1.4 to 3 Tesla or 7 Tesla. Higher the magnetic field, more number of, no, more number of dipoles will be recruited. Because not every atom will obey the command. When you put more pressure, more recruits will come under pressure and they will obey the command. So that's the reason when you move from 1.5 Tesla to 3 Tesla, there is increased number of molecules which will, which can be manipulated, which can, which will obey your commands. Once and, and the, that number of uh, atoms which will be under your command is, will eventually decide the SNR, the signal noise ratio, right? 10 molecules contributing your signal will be much weaker than 100 molecules com, uh, contributing to your signal. So that's the reason why we move up the Tesla. That's a uh, reason why is that. Okay. So once you get to the magnet, all this, want to ask something? not the more number of signals, each signal Quality. will be of higher magnitude. So you can differentiate noise from actual signal, right? The, uh, I don't know how to put it in uh, a physical uh, parlance, but the quality will be much better. The intensity, the intensity of particular frequency will be much higher. You can clearly differentiate if you want to threshold it, you can threshold it well above in a nice way so that the noise will completely get eliminated. Whatever you are seeing is actual signal from the patient body. So that's that's the SNR. The SNR, the SNR is one of the key parameter in any image. In MR, it makes even even more important. Okay, once these are aligned, what the next step is to give a RF pulse, radio frequency pulse. This is where the resonance comes in. The, tech, the name, the term resonance is uh, related to this. When you give an RF pulse to the body, it will, all those aligned protons will move depending on the power of the RF pulse. How much energy will give that will move uh, the protons or the uh, dipoles, right? Why it will, uh, I mean, even you could have done it without uh, magnetic field also, right? But when the molecule is within the magnet, it will process in a particular frequency. It spin in a particular frequency. When you match that frequency with your RF pulse, that will take the energy. That is where the resonance word comes in. So once it takes up the energy, it will move and it has to come back. Energy will not last forever, right? It has to come back. That time it will emit some signals. That is what is collected as MR signal. That is the process of MR imaging. You do multiple uh, manipulations. That's a, that's a sequence of events which will happen, which I'm not going to tell you at all. So generally it will align to it. If you give RF pulse, it will move outward. It come back to the position. It will emit some signal, right? It will, uh, there are coils to induction coils to pick up those signals and that will be converted into electric signal digitized by ADC and then it will be filled into a imaginary thing called K space. This is K space. This is K space. This is not an image which we can interpret. This will be converted into an actual image using a Fourier transformation. This is again a purely mathematical problem. We don't understand. But they yeah. can explain. Uh, if somebody can simply explain what is FT to us. To us. We never understood what is Fourier. Uh -huh. FT and IFT, no idea. Something we know he is a Frenchman, I think. Fourier. Right. Yes, yes. So, Many signals and he shifted the frequency or you know, 
can also interpret as you know government can be shifted by regulated by very small amount and it's contracted is wholly different you know abstract thing you can generate a square wave you can generate a whole totally abstract thing Okay, I am also getting, if I roughly understand, if there are multiple mixture of frequencies, various uh, wavelengths, various frequencies, to separate out each of the frequency, this FT is useful. I think this is applied in a far yeah, ranging yeah. field, including your audio, your, your uh, audio mixer and uh, equalizer is there, no? it is separating out frequencies and uh, you can see in the re-recording or recording. The thing is that the machine is doing the FT only, separating out mixer of frequencies. Like this, in the MRI, when the RF pulse is given and the body emits the energy in the form of uh, uh, energy that is captured by the coils around it and converted into electrical signal, the electrical signal's frequency will be of mixer of frequencies, poly frequencies. Separating out into separate distinct frequencies, this FT is doing, which is a mathematical thing. and Again, like CT scan, it is back projecting into the patient's cross section and filling the space with some numbers and which are converted into image. MR is also a cuts cross section modality. It can cut like this, it can cut like this, any direction. Your CT can do this, but MR can, for a very long time, it was a, has a capability to cut in any direction. Any direction can be opened up. So, there are, what is the benefit of MRI compared to CT scan? So, the first and foremost thing is radiation. There is no radiation involved in uh, MR at all. So, that is a key issue. You, especially for children, we use more of MRI because radiation is much more harmful in children. So, that is where we prefer MR. The other benefit of MR is spatial, sorry, contrast resolution. CT has a very limited paradigm to look at. CT can just estimate the electron density. The attenuation is purely based on the electron density of the particular structure. Whereas MR, you can by, by uh, constructing a different type of sequences, you can elicit multiple, you can evaluate multiple paradigms. What is a T1 nature? What is a T2 nature? What is a diffusion nature? These are multiple terminologies which you do not need to understand, but there are multiple paradigms which you can get from MR. So, the bottom line is there is no radiation, there is better or much better contrast resolution resolution so you can differentiate even uh, subtle structures uh, normal structures from abnormal structures on mr much better than ct and that's the reason why mr is you know considered as a better investigation compared to ct generally the reason is and that especially for my field neuro the brain see brain is inside a hard skull you can't put an ultrasound inside it okay even x-ray is not useful but this MRI is very, very helpful. Without MRI, neuroradiology does not exist to see inside the brain, not only anatomy, even some of the functions. Okay, I think we can continue. So, next step is we are acquiring so much images, how to archive them, how to retrieve them. Uh, so, uh, one more thing which is uh, we need to understand. Now, we have acquired, you know, all seen all the uh, imaging modalities, spectrum of imaging modalities, what all we have, what is the physical basis of it, how they are being acquired, how they, how, how we, you know, you get an idea, right, approximately, what are these modalities. Now, all these modalities generate image and what is the format of these images? This is not simple JPEG images or PNG or BMP images. These are specific format images called DICOM images, right? What are DICOM images? DICOM, DICOM images, if you compare it with any other uh, JPEG, it is you can consider it as like this JPEG image with some metadata. Mm -hmm. JPEG image with what is the patient name, age, what is the equipment used, what is the slice thickness which was done, what is the MA or uh, you know the parameters used, what was the speed of movement, what was the speed of go round and round, all these parameters are important to reconstruct an image. All these parameters are saved along with the JPEG image in a particular format in a format called DICOM image. So, DICOM format is can be considered as a container of JPEG with some well formatted metadata. That is all. There is no 
big uh, sophistication to this dicom image it's 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 a unique type which is used for medical imaging all medical imaging uses dicom images it is that is by an international yes, it's consensus a, it's, a, it's a international consensus obviously image decided. there were so many companies philips ge each one created his own image format they were not talking to each other then the international experts had a consensus look we have to save in a particular format which they called as dicom there are dicom 1 2 3 like like your python is evolving this is also evolving but there is a consensus worldwide this is the format and all, uh, there was something about packs what is this this image shows from multiple modalities ct scan mr ultrasound everything is sent to a common server in a particular architecture they have because archived because previously people used to carry lot of films bag of films nowadays you will see they give us symbol cd or dvd digital images so hospital as a institution also we have to store for a particular amount of time patients images and one patient will have multiple scans also so we give a single id and store it in a particular id for a specified period of time and these are all stored in a big servers located within the hospital or facility that is called a packs picture or chemical and communication system and we can talk to the packs at through multiple interfaces so typically we radiologists don't sit where scan is done we sit in another room it is sent to the packs from the packs we retrieve and see the images study the images write a report and send back the report to the packs only okay so this also we are highlighting this is also an important thing because only scanning is not enough uh, we have to interpret it we have to store it we have to communicate it to the patient and other doctors radiologists to send the report to others so everything is stored at one place that is called the packs so the so image format is dicom that is stored in a particular architecture the storage which is called as packs okay. as that's the simple depends for example if it is a radiograph radiograph will have of some radiograph will have 2k 3k resolution so accordingly the bit depth will be around 14 uh, bit depth so you can approximately calculate what is the uh, size it will be around 5 6 mb maybe ct scan images are traditionally lower resolution images all that gives more information than x ray but as a single image there can be 500 images 500 slices over a entire stack but if you look at an individual slice that will have a lower resolution compared to x rays for example 5 512 512 is the standard matrix size of any slice right 512 into 512 with 14 bit depth will be around maybe 500 400 kb roughly so that's the size of image mr would be around the same mr will have 200 kb 300 kb images uh, mammogram mammogram is something and again extreme modality which is done for breast imaging so that needs very high resolution that's probably one of the highest resolution uh, modality in radiology that image capacity or the storage size would be around 10 to 15 uh, mb mb because that's 4k level or 5k level uh image so it varies so this is the metadata with each image this one example patient this just just dicom this is the dicom header metadata means the all other associated as uh, they were explained including the age of the patient when the scan was taken what is the positional information so so, so as he rightly said it is a uh, dicom is an envelope containing a photograph as well as all the details about the Uh, owner of that photograph and the situation where was, where, where was it taken when it was taken what were the parameters used for it okay so if you anybody wants to work on a image typically we get a question sir give the images in jpeg we can't give a medical image in jpeg that may not be useful you are losing many information okay so this Because is one. if it is an x ray it is still okay because that's a single image which belongs to the patient if it is a stack of images 100 images there has to be a correlation between all those images right if you just remove the jpeg of all those i mean if you get the jpeg of all those slices how do you know which level the first slice belongs second level what is the position of the second slice what is the position of the third slice what is the thickness of that what is the reconstruction algorithm used for to reconstruct particular slice all this and all even the calibration of measurement you know if you want to measure something in the image 
how would uh, jpeg would know that you know this is the calibration which is needed so, so all the associated data will be with the dicom header so if you extract dicom and you throw away the header at least for ct scan and other mr images it will invariably uh, lose the context you will lose the context of that image you will just get images right but if you want to arrange it in a particular way interpret it in a particular way project in a different particular way you won't be able to do it although it in core dicom is a jpeg image with lot of metadata which is very critical metadata can okay break here already bored or uh, you can still sustain okay you want to continue okay wow heartening <laughs> <laughs> all right so if you have any questions honestly unless because this is a different domain i'm telling you again and again because we don't understand what you uh what you can understand to what level you can understand we are putting our best effort to make it very simple uh you know even that slice is a concept which we want to impress upon you you know x ray is different radiograph is different but ct scan is different so so those concepts are very important even this dicom concept is important so, so you if you have any questions anything please interested in asking i don't know you uh. high magnetic yeah you are right uh, you are right high magnetic field at clinical level like 7 tesla 11 tesla is not harmful again we didn't talk about something called gradient magnetic field there is something called static magnetic field that's the b0 no i'll not talk about b0 the static magnetic field of the particular magnet which is 7 tesla right let's say it is 7 tesla beyond that you need to change the magnetic field in us in such a way to give some gradient from here to top of the body to lower uh, half we have to give some gradient if it is 7 tesla the head end can be you know 6.9 tesla and the toe end can be 7.1 tesla how do you grade give this gradient there is a gradient for all 3d direction from right to left you know head to toe or back to front there are three gradients in the magnet what this gradient uh, they, they do is they when you acquire the image they flip or they change the polarity so frequently they change the polarity so frequently that it can induce nerve impulses it can trigger uh, nerve impulses so this all can happen it can even cause uh, you know temporary changes in ecg it can change it can give some headache peripheral nerve nerve stimulations so all can overall happen. they are negligible there is a parameter yeah. also for that that is yes. called a sar signal absorption ratio every scatter will have that 1.5 3 tesla but before a machine comes into market these are all studied by the regulatory authority only permissible levels of sar sar allowed into the market so by and large for a you know general public view it is not safe. harmful it's safe. safe it is safe, it's safe. some particular sub sub pregnant patients early pregnancy we may sometimes avoid if possible the mri scan that is also very relative if it is needed we will do still if i can so, give you an analogy between uh, atom bomb and a nuclear reactor you know you do it in a controlled environment you won't let it uh, off the uh, charge right so that is how it is even uh, ct scan is like that even i said ultrasound is a very good modality without any issues no it has some mechanical effects and thermal effects uh, if you go beyond a particular limit this is all mechanical waves it will deposit good, energy good analogy right the, the same ultrasound is to is used to burn tissues inside the body that's so high high density high uh, frequency ultrasound and multiple from multiple focus if you focus at a point the cumulative energy is so much that it will burn the tissues we are using it for other purpose also but as such in a single ray going and reflecting is not harmful all so seven then these all waves they uh, will deposit energy x rays are much more toxic other things are okay you know within this limits they are perfectly fine so anything else uh, or else we can the subsequent okay we will we'll talk about it yeah. but it's a very generic you know question starting from choosing the patient workflow automate the sequence in mr as i said you we can do multiple paradigms do a tune weighted sequence that's the reason why mr takes a longer time to finish you don't take a single volume you acquire one volume with something in mind 
second volume with t2 characters in mind third volume in different characters in mind so you take take multiple volumes right for a particular disease which volume should be taken for a particular patient this is a finding next what should be the most this is like a chess right most optimized move to go to the victory to get, reach the uh, destination right similarly yeah you can decide if you want to diagnose this particular thing this is the shortest route do these three sequences this is a suspicion do these three sequences yeah you can tell you these are the sequences do this in priority don't spend uh, much thing on so starting from that automation can be from you know the sequence part the dl deep learning uh, thing even mr images reconstructed from k space to uh, image they are reconstructed k space you can you know less number of data can be acquired to fill the k space so less the number of data acquired faster will be the scan so fill it with ai competence generate an image this is all before interpretation that and once the image is generated interpretation is a whole area where ai can help right which is where the radiologists are worried about can it replace us so starting from choosing the patient doing the scan generating images even after images even after diagnosis mining those images to get an you know idea of big data everything there is scope at each and every yeah, level we will cover as we go we will go huh? we will cover it okay uh, yeah. somebody else yeah you should it's very difficult to learn these images but you should have good idea about the images formats how they are acquired what is broadly what is the benefit and strong point of that particular uh, imaging modality and what can be the limitation of a particular modality so once so you know that it's a very good question the, our entire this talk is structured on that question only so what uh, what financial yes data. yes yes uh, yeah, yeah yes yes yeah yeah Yeah, yes. that you, data you, you will be RPA. working. Data scientist will be working with a domain expert, isn't it? So you will be selecting a particular modality. We said CT, X-ray, uh, MRI. These are uh, predominantly. You can use multiple modalities also, but you will be predominantly selecting a modality. At about that modality, you do should know the basics of the physics. Physics of the image formation. What does this image consist of? How it is made? Grossly, not into the details as we outlined just now. then how the image is available in which format image is available to you it is is it jpeg or more than that and the geometry of the image okay in which plane if it is axial plane coronal plane can we change it to any plane so enter this volume of the data that image what are the coordinates of the image in each coordinate how it is stored so that simple architecture you have to understand that uh, another thing is that what does it imply its biological meaning that is the most difficult part we find while collaborating okay does it seeing a vessel what does it mean okay i am showing an artery i mean artery or vessel to the brain and you should understand that it is supplying to the brain if it is blocked there will be something the brain will get affected so what are the implications some gross biological implications then the entire workflow how it is this thing. so you will be selecting a particular problem not every problem in the imaging domain you can take you have to take one problem either a logistic problem how to organize ima scanning patient coming into we will highlight this or if you are going to aid the image processing part what are the various ways of as he highlighted how partial information is given how to complete the full puzzle like this those areas you have to select so the basic is understanding the physics of that image formation and image formats how it is stored 
then what you are trying to what is the biological meaning of it or the healthcare meaning of implication of it these are some of the basics before working on the problem so at the end of the lecture if it our lecture partially answers your question also it is uh, job partially done from our side okay okay let me proceed so this is how the brain looks like once you open you might have seen these such images uh, in google and all this is how the brain looks like from viewing from one side there are multiple folds brain is not an exactly solid tissue this is the thing okay 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 you can see lot of the folds here the which are called sulci it is a folded soft jelly like thing and you can see what is red in this you can guess so red structures red structures arteries right correct these are the vessels okay so how you convert into a sectional cross sectional images how this brain will look like in a cross sectional image that is all what we are trained about okay this is a this the upper one this is the mr mri scan which is uh, transported to the operating room here the you see the patient is positioned the skull is open once it open it, it looks like this this is a live brain okay here you see why in the operating room there is an image the surgeon before entering here he wants to know what it will look like he anticipates something isn't it he has an idea he develops an idea based on these images and he knows where vital structures are there and he extrapolates his idea mentally to the live brain okay so once you open the something similar to looking at the street view of google before going to the play Ah. Yes, okay. This is how it look like. Let okay. it go. Okay. So brain is so important. You have to have a comprehensive view before entering it. Because if you enter the wrong street. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how it is, is converted no, into? There is no U-turn to that street. <laughs> okay. So how it is converted into axial slices? Obviously, you can't. Nobody will allow you to open the. skull and see the brain and close it right so we have to section it okay how you are putting the patient in the scanner this is for example a ct scanner and you are seeing the lines na almost slanted line these lines indicate along how the brain is cut okay uh, so the idea is how to go between the real anatomy and the cross sectional images so In the first section is you see how the brain in a cadaver. Cadaver means a, a dead body inside it. You cut and you cut and you see it will be like this. Next is the uh, you see this is the schematic this thing. When we train anatomy, we are given such images. We are asked to memorize what structure is what. Is that the uh, starting point of our training? So we. Uh, we name the structures and we understand the anatomy from the in the first mbbs you are given this cadaver so might have anyone gone to medical college you have seen dead bodies lined up we cut those things and we study this anatomy and we have a gross idea of this this is an mri image the right end is the cursor seen there yeah so this is an mri image this uh, you see the precision it is almost giving like a live anatomy right okay then this is another ct scan so as a radiologist we are trained what image is it and what how they look like in the various images based on this we come to a conclusion so this is the labeled this thing these are various names uh, for the structures half of them will be latin half of them will be greek and okay some english okay this way these are uh, given names and we understand this this is a, the, the the topic is title you saw how the radiologist interpret image right we we are trained in this to like this but if you train a algorithm also algorithm also has to remember these things and there are specific ways of annotating everybody every time a data scientist come to us give us the first request will be give us ground truth the ground truth i cannot give in my own way there is a standardized format so there are a lot of software solutions for also you, for annotation also annotation also i will have, we will as a domain expert as you ask we will annotate 
this data or these images in a particular way which will be understandable to the computer machine as well as the data scientist. So, in that way we learn this images. So, this is a typical console of ours which will show the x-ray. So, for to before doing any CT we take an x-ray just to plan uh, based on that uh, thing right. Otherwise, you would not know where this particular diaphragm is located where abdomen starts and it's very difficult to get an idea from the surface anatomy. So, you have to take a topogram which is also known as this is an x-ray which is a simple x-ray which will be taken before the uh, CT scan and we have to plan in this. How we plan? We if you want to take a chest uh, CT, we will start from the acquisition from this level to this level. If you want to take abdominal scan from this level to this level. Right, this is how we uh, do it. So, once the images are generated, you know, this is how it will look like. We can scroll through the sections. You know, when when this will, this will move like a movie, right? But these are actually sections coming from if you parallel look at this particular bar, each section corresponds to this particular cross section. So, when it moves, scroll, this is how it will. So, this particular location is being shown here. This particular location is being shown here. This is like a crosshair. You know, when you move across that each particular section, that is that is what uh, is being shown here. And at the same time, I, as I told you, we are we have we have acquired a volume here. We have we have the entire loaf of bread. It is it is possible to cut the bread like this or bread like this or like this or any whatever uh, way I want to cut it. That is all possible. So, that is a reason from the same data, from the same data, we can create these images also. This is cut like this and scrolling from back to, from and, I mean from back to uh, front or front to back, right. So, once you have the volume, the idea is once you acquire the entire volume and you can re reconstruct in any uh, plane you want. Generally, we cut it in this section. That is a traditional way we do it, but we can cut it in that direction also. We can cut in this direction also, curved also. Everything is possible. You have the volume because it is all volume based uh, reconstruction. Yes, yes. So, this is the best example to show that. So, now, here I know this is if I can interpret this chest x ray, there are from subtle lesions or problems in the lung, but beyond that, I do not know whether it is in the anterior part of the lung, posterior part of the lung, is it a you know overlapping shadow? If two things are distant from each other, but on x ray, it will overlap to each other because it is a compressed 2D image, right? So, when you want to separate it out, when you want to know the uh, spatial localization in this particular axis, so x-ray uh, uh, CT would show it better. Let me show an example for that. Okay. So, at this level, I could not have said that this particular patient had some fluid or water collection outside the heart. There is something called pericardium within which heart is located and there can be fluid collection in that pericardial sac, right. Based on x-ray, I could not have said that this patient has a particular kind of fluid collection, but on CT, I can very well say that this particular area is fluid. So, this gives more contrast resolution also. You can get much more details and this is the anterior part of the chest and this is a posterior part of the chest. Any lesion here or here, I can tell you that where, where is it located depending on location is everything in radiology. Location is everything in radiology, which compartment you, you localize it, your diagnosis is based on that. I cannot, uh, you know, unless you localize it to lung, I cannot make it as a lung carcinoma. So, lo localization is very important. So, that is the reason it is uh, uh, CT is much better. And even in this particular section also, this is a vertebral body right which is posterior located or which is close to the back and that is the reason it is close to the back patient is lying here the patient is in lying position the vertebra is back the abdomen is 
front this is this is abdomen right this area is in the front upper part patient you, you can imagine that patient is lying down you have cut the patient and you are seeing it from the toe end of the patient that is that is how these images are uh, has to be looked at all right okay sorry so i also talked about cross hairs uh, in some context since you again the same point this is a volume right once you have a volume you put the cursor wherever you want you bring the cross hair where you want that particular section will be reformatted that particular section will be shown based on wh wherever you place that cross hair any 3d location it's a 3d structure body if you put the cross hair here it will show this cross section it will show this uh, cross section and it can show this cross section if you move the cursor somewhere here it will show this this and this so that is also possible so and after that since again these are multiple sections right these are group of sections which are created you can fuse two three sections or multiple sections and you can create a different kind of image i'll not go into the details of it it will be little uh, difficult to understand those are called maximum intensity projection images have you heard of heard of this uh, terminology maximum intensity projection okay let's skip that but the purpose of these uh, post processing these are post processing methods you have the image in your hand but you want to post post process it in a way that you want to highlight something is better so in this particular case i wanted to look at the vessels properly same data right same data but when i did this maximum intensity projection i can nicely i can nicely see the blood vessel heart this is a portal vein this is aorta so we can nicely see that so if you manipulate the image you can highlight few things at the same time you can suppress few things this is post processing you have the the source of image is the same which we looked at in the previous slide it's the same data set but by the way you manipulate it you can uh, bring out structures you want to see it better all this can be automated or uh, you can use various algorithms to make it more user friendly mr images i'll just show you because it's very similar to that this is again a disk a section but the difference between mr and uh, ct is ct has a single source of data with which you can manipulate all those things but mr has multiple paradigms you need to acquire separate data so for example this is again this is again a cross section this is a vertebral body here these are kidneys here these are this is close to the back this is close to the front this is heart top to bottom right this is the more cranial part of the body this is more sorry this is more upper part and this is more lower part so these images are little difficult to understand but just i wanted to show this again a cross section at this level but a different type of image this is t1 weighted image this is a diffusion weighted image this is a post contrast image the image which is acquired after giving some contrast into the body so the point is that mr has multiple sets of images but the idea is same either you cut like this have a stack either you cut like this you have a stack or cut like this so you acquire the entire volume in that way all right i think this is the last one this is the fluoroscopy image this is the video of that uh, x ray right so this is a, we want to study the way how the food goes through the esophagus and enters the stomach all these bright areas here this is the stomach and food particle the contrast is in the stomach and the child is breathing now you can see the breathing of the child and at the same time you can if you inject that uh, contrast into the mouth this is the mouth from the side view right and the child is swallowing the food which is given and you can see the esophagus is you know taking in and pushing it into the stomach so if there is any abnormality it's very difficult to see it on a uh, simple uh, radiographs so that's how this 
video x rays are more beneficial subtraction angiography these are you know you suppress the background totally and you just look at those vessels this is also kind of movie you inject contrast here into the blood vessel and it spreads over the body right so this is dsa i'll not stress much upon this so just he showed the body angiography vessels this is for the vessels supplying the brain uh, so he has explained the how the cross section moves from about to i have given not given the cursor how it moves but observe certain details uh, uh, forget this patient name i should not have seen see 935 images are there okay to see them we have to see al almost 935 images each of the slice may contain information as i said we just get a gross idea based on this but what we are more comfortable is same data as as dr deva said this is reconstructed nice tree this data is embedded in the axial images if i scroll through them also i can mentally make a tree out of it but to make my job easy uh, our uh, engineering engineering architecture has given this solution you can see the entire tree, tree. this is the iota from the at this chest level it gives three four major tubes to supply the brain they go into the brain we can study in the entire structure of it whenever i get doubt at a particular level i will put the crosshair here it will directly take to me the particular axial slice source image source image okay this is actually so, the entire volume uh, this is the entire volume uh, where we are trying to highlight just the vessels okay so whenever we get doubt we can go back to the source image or source axial image and we can make up a uh, go study it in detail this is regarding vessel supplying brain okay so you have seen this i think oh. this can be skipped because skip a little bit yeah these are various tools he said me for these are various post processing methods which have been developed by different vendors to make our job okay. easy it was already yeah. there in our uh, workstation like this these are very attractive images in a three dimensional rendering okay you can see in this here there was a stent that has been placed inside and we have taken these are sources ct scan only ct scan same axial images you give various uh, yeah. Processing yeah, yeah you gave the correct word filters. Huh? Filters. Filters. filters filters also correct right and uh, you, you give some value addition to the images and uh, to make the job easier and and as a radiologist there is a difference between doctor community also no the pe pe surgeon operating surgeon is different he is not a radiologist he is referring to us and we are making a diagnosis and giving communicating to them but the operating surgeon like he may demand a google street view he himself will want to see it so to more friendly views are like this okay he thinks uh, something red he sees now he will be happy okay he also opens everything is bloody the image also looks like very okay these are very descriptive images like in your google spreadsheet excels the what is the data display formats like this these are uh, friendly display formats if i can give an analogy you, you know 3d printing right 3d printing imaging is the exact ult of 3d printing we are 3d printed already mm. our sections are you know even 3d printing it is done in sections right at one point you do the section another section another section climb up climb that's right building an apartment so our body is a 3d structure you now slice it the ultra of 3d printing the reverse of 3d printing this is exactly what it is that once you understand that that's that is nothing but what it, we mentioning about slides slices and all slice sections these are the sections so that reminds me of another thing for 3d printing you might have heard of joint replacement your entire knee joint is taken away and put by metal this thing that metal thing is printed by 3d printed the data for that goes from 
this scans, CT scans axial. They give like this from a images, it reformats exactly to the anatomy and the defective anatomy is there, that's why you are replacing. So, the surgeon prescribes, I want like this. So, with the data, it goes to the 3D printer and gives a 3D printed metallic joint, which is fit into the patient's body. What is the need? Because each patient's anatomy is different. So, okay. now you have this VRT volume rendered images of the particular anatomy, you want to replace this. So, this can be converted into a STL file. This particular data can be directly converted into a STL file. STL file, you understand, right? STL file, right? The 3D printing or source file. And once you have the X, uh, this converted into STL file, it can be 3D printed. Okay. These are a uh, few things uh, I think we can skip. Uh, it, uh, also we can. Yeah, so, CD also we can skip because there are various uh, techniques within CT also to highlight few things. What is the blood flow within that particular area? You can you can measure it using CT scan by doing multiple sections at the same uh, point, and you uh, use all the time points, multiple time points, temporally multiple time points, and extract the data. You can show what is the blood volume in that area. What is the blood flow in that area? How is it going to help? You can characterize the tumor. If there is a tumor with high blood flow, we know that there are few tumors which have high blood flow. We can say that even before taking a biopsy or uh, removing it, we can say that this, this particular tumor has very high blood flow, which means this has to be a particular type of tumor. The surgeon will be alarmed. Okay, this is very high blood flow. So before going in, I have to be prepared okay. to so, an it. application for this uh, type of imaging would be recently uh, we received a request from uh, mechatronics department of IIT Delhi. Some of the professor came, uh, they, we are specializing in soft robotics. How can be of use to you? Okay, so we are physics uh, enabled AI, that is physics informed AI and building models. So, I said everything is open for this. Nothing is solved inside the brain, how it works, how it blood flows, what is the perfusion. So, when we discuss these modalities, blood going into the vessel is one thing, it is like a pump, heart is pumping, it is going into. How it is perfusing, how it is reaching the tissue, that is called CT perfusion modeling. So, this data we can give, you build a model, satisfactory model. So, this how it leads to, as data science develops and our imaging modalities also converge, maybe uh, solving certain problems. So, this is unsolved problem inside the brain, how blood goes and comes out because this is a solid skull, some 10 ml blood goes inside where the blood will go, there is no space, something should come out also. There is a, uh, if you, you will agree your, your brain is pulsating each time, with each heart pump, the brain will also little bit going out and come. These are problems even we do not understand. We observe certain things, certain normal things, certain abnormal things. To explain them into building into models, mathematical models, there are atoms where intense computational uh, ability as well as conceptual modeling combined with this. For them, the uh, invariable sources are these imaging sources only because otherwise you cannot collect data. Combined with some other physiological parameters like EEG, EEG signal analysis is also another big area, electrical signal, recording the electrical signal, recording the electrical signals and localizing it to the source, okay, combining that with imaging information. So, image gives anatomy, EEG gives electrical signal, overlapping them. So, these are all the, some of the scope, okay, but uh, detailing each how CT perfusion works, how MR perfusion works may not be a job of a two hour lecture. But just we wanted to give an overview, give an idea. What are the general possibilities? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, coming with how radiologists interpret images. So, uh, the, as you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence mimic the work of the human brain or biological brain, isn't it? Okay. Like if you come into the imaging, you have to copy the working of a mind of a radiologist, isn't it? Okay. So, this is will be at instant diagnosis. So, if I ask my radiology friend, Dr. Raghavadi, so what will you say with this without knowing anything? 
yes have a register bc it is no brainer <laughs> he is a very senior radiologist it is a no brainer it is a bleed within the brain how it uh, how he makes the diagnosis within a fraction of second so i will show to make this diagnosis how many unit uh, r net uh, architecture were developed and finally machine is successful separating a hemorrhage but uh, what happened inside his brain within a fraction of second also involves a uh, series of his eyes has seen it that has gone it it has recollected with his memory no knowledge he has first mbbs how the brain looks like and how ct scan is formed how the ct scan will show the bleed inside the brain then these process are there okay okay another thing everything will not be sight forward immediately uh, the trouble do you see everything i'm normal here yeah so if i combine a history uh, this is a young man coming with left uh, hemiparesis left uh, left side uh, stroke yes so he has come to it. so so image may look apparently normal if i give some information this is a, of a patient who had a left side paralysis then he says okay there is subtle difference between both sides that's a cue you know yeah. that's yeah. the reason why we need to understand the uh, patient's condition also we cannot okay. just look at images and decide okay so we'll focus yeah. on few areas okay so so apparently normal thing also and uh, revisit it will the things will be okay. so how do you diagnose how he came to the diagnosis uh, both the times like so these are some of the uh, knowledge of this partially answers Third question, like how a system, a human system diagnosis, type of the image, what I am looking at, whether it is a CT scan, whether it is an MRI, or it is an ultrasound scan, or it is a nuclear scan, which we are not talking about, and knowledge of normal anatomy, how it will look like in a normal patient, and what whether it is abnormality is there, what kind of abnormality, that can be bleed, that can be vessel blockage, that can be a tumor, that can be cancer, okay. So those knowledge are and clinical situation like I gave the information this is a map from man who complained of this thing this combined to form a diagnosis so behind this what is working is a thing unexplainable thing which I cannot give in words is some medical intuition which we over the years we were trained and uh, uh, we you can't see many prodigies in medical field because medical field needs some structured training for a prolonged period because we are dealing with uh, human life isn't it that's why structured training and it that incorporate as a medical intuition to this so if you are replacing it with are replacing or adding value to with machines this all precautions should be taken okay so these are the elements which can be uh, incorporated into a uh, helping tool So you can read this. Doctor has built-in neural networks. Okay, artificial neural networks try to mimic this uh, way. This this how we understand the evolution of the your neural networks by training the algorithm adequately. Possible to make AI to perform cognitive tasks. That is uh, happening. That was a theme of uh, science fiction movies some decades back. Now it, they are becoming a reality so uh, this no. your slide here. so this is how a brain uh, uh, brain works our brain works radiol's brain or anybody who is going to interpret the images or anything will work multiple neurons will fire depending on the pattern recognition previous memory the teaching uh, whatever a book information and all multiple neurons will fire and there will be a weightage also which is happening here so which neuron fired better which neuron uh, gave more signals so eventually there will be a decision which will take place at sub at a particular neuron which will decide our diagnosis oh this looks like this i have seen this before and this is hyperdent this is ct and there is a patient with a history of stroke no this is this one this is how brain takes a decision exactly very similar to that and this is why this is called as neural networks 
the same way it mimics our brain uh, functioning so when you show a dog or a cat it will decompose that image into multiple filters all do all the forensics and cut copy paste and everything and it will go through multiple layers and try to find a pattern and eventually it will decide on the uh, output node that yeah this is most likely a dog or most likely a cat so it works very similar to a, a brain even even to train a resident or a trainer radiologist it takes lot of time we have to see thousands of images to get ourselves trained very similarly in uh, dl uh, methods also you need lot of data to train because eventually the weightage the mathematical formula of that weightage is the deciding factor the decision is based on that weightage that particular mathematical equation which however complex it may be that it happens over a period of time in our brain without without even us knowing about it but that is that is what is being the done actually the highlighted areas colored areas actually refer to the places where biological eftis take place fourier transformation takes place you cannot uh, take all the signals inside the brain and that, that will be nice only you have to select some frequencies and send to the next higher center next higher center that's how human brain interprets human brain also ignores an issue unwanted signals and only takes the useful signal okay okay so these are the areas where uh, a is already established in medicine genome research and all those things just wanted to highlight few landmark things which has happened uh, in the area of healthcare and some in radiology also so this is uh, similar to our friend uh, who did it, uh, yeah. yes attempted right? this was done in 2017 they did a it's a very uh, yeah. nice study which you can uh, see it later also they trained this particular data uh, thing with thousand, more than a lakh uh, images and uh, they want to classify this uh, images this into multiple things benign uh, benign malignant or you know different categories so, I, i will add here there were mm. two areas started very early in the application of ai one is ophthalmology and another is dermatology the reason is they are based on photographs simple photographs uh, skin texture otherwise on the retina also you can fix a camera inside the retina you can take a photograph high resolution images and these were ahead early to develop uh, machine learning solutions for many interpretations this is one of the similar landmark paper in this one so yeah any vision or come here image based modality or image based disciplines like radiology ophthalmology pathology and all these are even we look at images so they those were the initial targets because dl was performing very good in computer vision it can see look at images which was not possible before and in this this particular paper the a was comparable to you know certified dermatologist even in 2017 when he was trained it was able to classify uh, dermatological lesions skin lesions in a way how a proper certified dermatologist would do so this was one thing and the other paper which i wanted to highlight is that this was from indian data and uh, and this was done in patients with diabetic retinopathy retinopathy is again a retina problem in patients with diabetes and machine was given multiple uh, images thousands of images to train and the information what they gave was age of the patient bp of the patient what is the blood level of glucose all the parameters were given and the target was to find out what is the grade of retinopathy which even of top of the almologists should be able to do it they can from ophthal primary human which we understanding so they can grade the uh, 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 of diabetic retinopathy in a some certain way they wanted to try the same whether machine will be able to do this machine did that very comparable to uh, doctor uh, it did everything in addition to that machine also was able to predict the age of the patient without with just looking at the photo of the uh, fundoscopy or the retinal image and even the sex of the patient gender you know the area of the uh, area I, under I the curve is even after a 50 years of training uh, ophthalmologists cannot separate with by seeing the images they're telling the gender all of the, the four, patient all but, the four things uh, so it's humanly not possible uh, so not only it graded the red retinopathy in a very satisfactory way it also performed multiple other actions which were was which was not possible on uh, this particular modality so obviously we are looking at something some pattern 
and computer is looking at something different so sometimes it can teach you sometimes it can uh, you know perform better than uh, you so this is another landmark uh, paper which rekindled the way we understand and uh, see ai another paper this is a breast imaging this is a radiograph of the breast and we look at uh, breast imaging to you know to pick up cancers breast cancers so this particular first image was when ai looked at this image it said that there is a high degree sorry there is a high risk lesion here but for a radiologist even to me this looked like a benign looking tiny nodule didn't look significant so it was ignored by the radiologist but after 4 years this nodule became bigger and it actually uh, was a breast cancer all right so but dl was able to predict this particular nodule 4 years earlier also i'm not saying that it is better than uh, human capability or anything but there are situations it where it can help you aid you it can warn you it can screen the patients so take a second look at it so see it again i think it is abnormal so that's a way uh, it can help you this what i was uh, talking about that uh, dr raghubadi diagnosed in a fraction of second this hemorrhage this recent paper this uh, 3d convoluted cnn which is a roi based cnn initially it puts an roi of uh, different sizes and it localizes to a particular area grass uh, right or left hemisphere left hemisphere it localizes and then further uh, it the network further refines it and draws an outline of a hemorrhage or bleed within it which was as good as drawn by a trained radiologist not only that it diagnosed that there is a bleed and it gave a volume also how much bleed so 10 ml 20 ml so there are rigorous methods if you spend half an hour you can draw each slice and give it to the, the pixel counting and we can estimate this but this this after training this model within fraction of few seconds it calculated the not only diagnosed that there is bleed and it calculated the volume also this is a big bleed but it diagnosed even smaller bleeds also as he said than the case of a breast cancer this also diagnosed small even small bleeds still it is not into clinical use because this also uh, to come into a clinical use in uh, implementation there is a lot of steps showing this this is not at a this may be a partially solved problem that still there is scope recently we have given a, a project for iit graduates said to identify in a our setup uh, just to diagnose there is a bleed to triage what is triage means if there is a bleed the patient goes to another pathway if there is no bleed goes to another path to take that decision quickly where hundreds of scans are done such a algorithm may be useful so we are experimenting with one group of graduates to build our own model i as you know there are no one single solution for any uh, data science problem there will be multiple models developed uh, there is al- almost competition in the market whether it comes to a finished product that is, it is a long way in between but these are the first initial results okay so i'll i'll show you some of the work which we are doing which will give you some sense of what is the scope and what can be done uh, in the field of ai so we uh, we have this routine issue of calculating the age of the patient this has uh, uh, you know this has a legal uh, implication also if somebody claims i am not uh, 18 he has done a crime if he claims that i am not 18 so it comes into juvenile this thing right so the one way to uh, you know estimate the bo- age is to look at the bones x ray of the bone and you can calculate the bone image i mean based on that you can calculate the age so this is called as bone age estimation right so to calculate bone age uh, based on x ray it's a tedious process especially if you want to calculate it more accurately where it matters it takes long time 15 minutes 20 minutes to complete the entire uh, you know we have to map with an atlas dictionary you have to map it and then calculate the uh, age of the patient but machines can draw the pattern match it quickly and give you to in seconds like 2 3 seconds it takes so that is um, it's already a product now 
and uh, there is one more uh, example i wanted to tell you is that uh, during covid we also tried everyone tried but we also tried uh, using our uh, x-ray data to train the cnn what we did was we used uh, uh, positive covid x-rays and negative x-rays and all those things to train the model and uh, and model was performing this was done by uh, one of my colleague not directly me but i was also associated so what they did was it was able to it was able to localize the lesion so this is a chest x ray again you know now you can understand right chest x ray right chest x ray and there is an abnormality here and there is a heat map which is saying that this particular area is abnormal and uh, that's the boundary box and all those things so so it was able to pick up the covid positive x rays and lesions in uh, these things in a decent uh, number of patients but what it also did was it was constantly pointing out some in, in some patients it was constantly pointing out the heart area you all know that covid is a lung disease we are also perplexed why it was pointing out the heart we, we had no clue that maybe it was an error or whatever it is but when we retrospectively looked at the data in all those patients uh they had associated cardiac failure also which we didn't know earlier but you know these are the things where probably a can you know point to something which we did not think in the first uh, this thing but that uh, so called black box may be disturbing to us but uh, it that black box delivers yeah it's important to give freedom to the uh, uh, algorithm so that it, it it learns on itself instead of saying that no isko dekho this this is this is where you should look at this no it let it actually as a teacher for our students if he say some diagnosis the next question will be why you are saying this unfortunately we cannot ask this yeah. to a to a cnn how you are saying okay so other area of uh, interest uh, is uh images as i told you uh, x ray is you know 2k matrix uh, mammogram is 4k matrix uh, ct is 512 matrix when you look at those ct those stack of 1000 images you you can't look at individual pixels oh, what is happening what is happening? no we just crawl through and something yeah, we, our brain is tuned to pick up a pattern macroscopic pattern i am talking about macroscopic pattern when there is a pattern matches something we stop there little bit so see it carefully metaphorically we see the woods not the tree yeah Okay. so now but there is lot of data hidden with those images you know number of pixels phyto into phyto in each image across 1000 images is a lot of data when you use this image to look at the change of grayscale values the what is the pattern of change of grayscale values how it is arranged is there anything microscopically hidden that particular thing is technique is called radiomics omics you understand this is radiology related so it is radiomics when you find this pattern in a microscopic um, way and you combine it with the genetic makeup of the patient if it is a tumor lung lung tumor if it is a particular mutation positive eg for eg for positive mutation and if there is a particular uh, way the pixels are distributed you can associate that particular two things or oh, this eg for mutation has this kind of uh, microscopic patterns which we won't look at in macroscopy humanly it is not possible but when you look at those pixels and analyze you will be able to find out once you find out create an association from next time onwards when you look at uh, data if you find this fingerprint of this microscopic variations you can say that this patient even without doing biopsy you can say that this this patient has a tumor which is egfr mutation positive so you can predict it by this is this is the role of radiomics we did some work in uh, uh, i'll skip these slides in this area where uh, in fact we got it published also in few papers uh, this is kidney and this there is a tumor in the kidney we marked an roi and we uh, did lot of texture analysis which is again you know uh, it is called radiomics is also called as texture analysis we analyze the texture of that tumor based on the grayscale values so how it is i mean have you heard of glrm grayscale values okay anyway okay you must have heard about okay so the pattern of pixel changes over a distance that is that is what we are looking at not to naked eye we have to look at microscopic or it's all uh, done by algorithms so once you 
pick up a particular pattern you can predict the tumor of a particular kind in this particular paper we saw that we used uh, renal tumors to uh, train and once we uh, did the uh, uh, study we were able to find out what type of tumor it is renal for a radiologist it is it is difficult to decide beyond rcc to say what type of renal cell carcinoma it is we cannot say what type of most of the times it is not possible to say this is a type of renal cell carcinoma clear cell type or promophobe type or whatever is the type of carcinoma but with this radiomics you can probably predict the histological character what is the type of rcc or renal cell carcinoma so that's the scope of uh, radiomics another paper sometimes renal cell carcinoma can look very similar to a benign tumor they all look very similar right if you, you we used uh, particular radiomics uh, feature extraction thing in uh, in those group of patients we found that radiomics was able to differentiate those two things even though we are not able to see it in naked eye from naked eye but it was able to find out so these are these are the use case scenarios you know these are this is a problem where we cannot do we, we cannot distinguish something if it can distinguish it's better right so it's ai ml or cnn whatever if it enhances our uh, ability to distinct or differentiate something it's it's better all right so we also did another study with iit delhi where uh, we try to see whether the bone tumor when a chemotherapy is given to a patient whether it responds or not some patients respond and some patient may not respond right this is a usual scenario we don't know why can we predict this uh, whether there is response or not beforehand at the first scan we ra we ran this radiomics uh, 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 thing in the baseline scan we try to predict at to some extent we are able to say that even at the first scan we would say that this patient would be able to respond to chemotherapy this particular set of patients will not be able to respond so if is not going to respond why to wait and you know put through the entire course of chemotherapy try something else so this is an a use case scenario i am not trying to show this an example to do the same thing this is this is use case scenario where you can use this kind of problems you have to come up with problems and try to solve using these computational tools and uh, this is another one which again we did it with iit delhi uh, you know tumor scan throw metastasis spread to lungs when they spread to lungs they form nodules in the lungs right we wanted to mark those nodules segment it out but you know there are multiple sections and each nodule is a tiny one it's very difficult to manually mark all those areas so we wanted to create a tool semi automatic tool if you just uh, load the patient it will be able to locate the nodule and segment it out draw a contour and segment the volume we wanted the volume and things for other things but the the initial segmentation was a tedious process it's very difficult to you know every slice there will be 10 slices across which the nodule is present and there can be 20 uh, nodules in the lung it's very difficult to mark it out right so th the need was an automated or semi automatic algorithm which will run through pick up the nodule segment it so we did yeah dicom dicom yeah yeah initial starting point is dicom some softwares convert that into nifty format nia format there are formats but the starting point is going to be dicom the 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 format which will come out of the machine will be dicom if you want to convert into anything else it can be done so this was the ground truth with the radiologist marked the blue one whereas this red one was very tiny lesion very tiny nodule which was done by the algorithm similarly here and this was able to market a decent uh, you know ability there is an error we can also always look at this and delete it you know you know instead of marking out in each slice it's much better it's fast and easier so this was a semi automatic uh, segmentation algorithm which we developed when in association with uh, iit delhi so these are few things which we are doing right now and dr joseph will tell you what are the no, are we proceeding it's already told that wow yeah <laughs> you must be hungry right uh, no hungry for data <laughs> 
how oh, medical intervention is intervention has lot of connotations intervention from radiology point of view is radiology interventional radiology he is the uh, uh, new interventional yeah, I, I radiologist so this case yeah. Yeah. otherwise intervention is anything you are giving a drug is also intervention Inter you are diagnosing so, something you are giving some treatment you are changing the course of yeah. the disease by either, doing something either it will be operation it will be a drug like this or a radiologist will do something these are called intervention and you see the effect it can okay. be medical yeah uh, any yeah. intervention to you if you try to change the course of the disease is intervention so ideal is every disease want to be conquered treated well after an intervention okay so that may not be possible always so how much effect it is giving to it that is the study okay so we will quickly rush through some potential areas so this one of the as you uh, right time you asked so this one young man comes with wakes up with stroke you know what is stroke it is like you can understand as a paralysis one side of the body is not working okay stroke is a major cause of number two killer i think among the first uh, the first is road traffic accident uh, next is cardiac disease uh, heart disease so brain uh, stroke is brain if a, this is a, how it is diagnosed ct scan we take we, we see whether there is bleeding inside the brain or not bleeding will be looking like white after that you say go for the ct angiogram where you see if you come come by right and left side left side some vessels are not seen it means vessels are blocked that is stroke exactly okay so these such patients are nowadays immediately if they come within a certain time period taken to the cath lab where this angiogram is done you see the we see the vessel is blocked and we go inside that vessel take out the clot you can see this this is the clot and the, the, this is the in the gas piece that this clot has was blocking it it has been taken out and this was what it looked like after taking out the clot this is what you are seeing more vessels more right uh, this removing the block so this patient improves dramatically improves uh, if you leave it for few hours without removing the clot the paralysis will be permanent okay but this cannot be done for every patient who will benefit from this that is a lot of uh, before designing this we, uh, as a in an emergency room patient is taken ct scan within 5 minutes these scans will be done ct scan ct angiogram this colored maps are what we call a ct perfusion to and the other thing is collateral main path is blocked if you see in the traffic if your main road is blocked in few seconds you will see the here and the small streets are filled with traffic like this like that are called collateral the other paths how they are open this should be studied i am just highlighting how many how much data in a 5 minute uh, then if, along with the history what happened to him clinical data this much data is should be processed by a radiologist or interventionist in a few minutes and take a decision whether to do that operation for him or not here comes the scope for so uh, in one in five patients our uh, decision may be wrong we may be ignored a correct patient who could have been benefited not doing the intervention and selected the wrong patient also that can happen you you will see where, wherever you go to the hospital the doctor comes and explain see this is the risk i can do this after this something can go wrong this much percentage so how to minimize that percentage how to take a very correct decision which is humanly very challenging task to assess so much data data so if i put in uh, your language it may be a uh, almost gbs of data to process and take a decision here we, there are role uh, people uh, are working on this like already papers are uh, coming there is a good review article from uh, american journal of neuroradiology still i will say nothing is finished a product are coming but still there are attempts going on like mapping this the, you are seeing the white area where which says this area of brain is affected after the ct scan only it may be visible to the human eye or not that after a train network it can highlight this area is at risk and it can show the heat map here i said now main, main path is this ring shows the main path is vessel is blocked and there is a collateral roots whether it is adequate or not this much area this colored area it is not adequate if you don't intervene this area may die 
this area may go permanent loss of function to suggest these things there this is a, a mobile based phased interface developed by brainomics one company they have offer some finished solutions and i said the clot will go out block the vessel you are taking a thickening of the clot how much it is left how thick it is what is inside the clot whether only cells or some calcium is there these things can be uh, humanly for naked eye it may not be possible but there are work going on in detecting this so this is what, what that clot detection algorithm it was there obviously i don't understand this uh, so such networks are being developed to uh, this thing another thing is this one disease called multiple sclerosis where this inside the this is not one time disease throughout the life of the patient lesions keep coming uh, they just look like as they were shown in the lung there are small tiny white areas so it is a very daunting task to compare for example 2017 this was the scan 2018 this was the scan now the patient is coming whether there are new lesions coming or not this is a very difficult task for this we are seeking a uh, automated solution which can automatically highlight some of them are uh, able to succeed in this this thing but still there is hope these are basically segmentation and classification problems and uh, yeah. so um so scope is everywhere right from patient order you know clinician tells you they go and get a scan for this particular thing so right from there till the uh image generation even after during the reporting archiving the entire pipeline or the entire workflow can be improved every step has scope you just have to find an area where there is a problem even if there is no problem can it be make can it be made faster can it be made user friendly every everywhere there is a need you know it can always be improved even if there is a problem it can always be improved so scope is not just in the interpretation part not just the radiologist you know looking at images diagnosing diagnosing it's not that it it is it is at each and every level you know even within the machine also whether it is reconstructing the image uh, so the options are multiple i would say the entire pipeline is the opportunity not just the interpretation part you don't you should not have this idea of uh, uh, you know ai in radiology is interpretation of images it's a it's a part it's a bulk of the work and where most of the things are being attempted in this particular area as of now but the entire process is an uh, yeah it's the same thing um i okay. think these are okay so we will finish are... complete with this after this we say, said intervention this is typically done by humans as of now there are robots which are also i mean ai informed robots which can perform for us because what we are typically doing inside the brain is which require millimeter accuracy okay so uh, which require a long training period so there are attempts there are already a uh, few successful things to do mimic what we are doing by machines this was the robot i typically what this hand you can see this arm robotic arm this mimics our hand so millimeter by millimeter we are moving the wires inside the brain we take access through vessel artery and take wires inside the brain and move it and there will be if it is a blockage we remove the block if it is a bulging or balloon something aneurysm what we call we put some coils so we are there are uh, atoms like this artificial robotic arms with sensors which can sense inside the, in the tip of the wire there will be sensor that will give information and regulate the movement and there are some successful cases done by robots also and there are instances also in the this is in the brain in the heart cardiac side you might have heard in the news patient in gujarat uh, done by uh, the operator was sitting in the america uh, chicago from that they operated they successfully opened a block in the heart like this though the robotics are also finding this way inside this thing and some of the problems like i see said there is a block black box uh, we don't know what exactly it uh, happened 
because we talked about a lot of positives of AI for a lot of time, right? But there are issues in AI also. For example, we don't understand why it takes such a decision. And oh, sorry. So yeah. why it takes a particular decision? Because uh, if if, if op- I mean surgeon cannot operate on a patient because A said so, right? A said there is a cancer. Surgeon cannot go and operate. He has to see the lesion. He has to understand logic why it said. Even we cannot believe unless we know the logic behind the decision, right? That is the key link which we feel is uh, lacking. It is good in uh, picking up tumor. It is good in uh, everything is fine. But but if it says this is a tumor. this is malignant we need to understand why it took the decision so that particular part is still a black box there are various you know things which are being mm. uh, explored to bring out that uh, logic behind this but still uh, largely it is it is uh, a black box so what we would need in future is an interpretable ai ai which will let you also will let you know that why it took a decision like this so if it uh, that that would be a uh, very good uh, thing so i think we'll finish it uh, with this if you have any questions patient okay. thank you for patient listening mm. uh, if you have any questions we'll be happy to answer